everybody, Mr. Bush here. So this is going to be a video about how to build a lamp in Tinkercad. Now, if you've been, taken one of my classes before, you'll know that actually like we've done the similar project like this. Um, and if you want to make a lamp like this or some other uh, type of lamp, you can go right ahead and do that. This is your lamp. You guys get to do what you want to do. But in this video, I thought I'd try to take a different, um, a different look or a different take on it. So what we're going to do, this is my desk lamp. This is the one that's actually sitting right here above me. You can't see it in the video, but uh, but it's there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to design something similar to this lamp in Tinkercad. Uh, you'll notice uh, you'll notice in this video that we're going to cover a couple of Tinkercad basics. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to move, build, move stuff off of the build plane. Uh, we're going to work on sizing things quickly. We're going to work on duplicating things and importing other designs from other places like Thingiverse. Uh, we're also going to cover grouping and we're going to cover the whole tool, uh, which is a really powerful uh, feature in Tinkercad. Um, if it also kind of assumes that you've tried the tutorials in Tinkercad. So if you haven't done those in a while, so if it's been a while since you used Tinkercad, you may want to go back, press pause on this video, and then click the Learn tab up on the, the top on, on your uh, your basic page. And then what you can do is, you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cover basic, these basic things. Um, if you've done the tutorials, if you're totally new to Tinkercad and you've done the tutorials when you, that you get when you log in, those are just fine. You can, you'll, you'll be fine with this lesson. Uh, I, so again, so what Tinkercad does is that it uses shapes um, to help you build designs that you want to, to use. So if we look at this lamp, we're going to see a couple of basic shapes that, that are here. So right here, I kind of noticed that there's a cylinder at the top. There's, um, there's a parabola design right here in the main part of the lamp. We have a couple of triangular prisms right here, right here, and then also right here. Um, there are kind of rectangular prisms right here. You know, they're, they're basic once, a, and they all look to be about the same. So these prisms right here, the triangular prisms, as well as uh, these two right here. Um, you'll also notice that there's uh, cylinders right here uh, and right here. They're also relatively the same. Um, and yeah, so those are kind of the basics of, of this lamp. Um, there's also features that you may or may, or like I may or may not choose depending upon how much time it takes. Uh, how much time that I have, oops, there we go. Uh, so I'll notice like a cylinder right here. And also I noticed that the cords are right here. Um, we're also gonna need to figure out something as well. So like we're gonna have to make some sort of base for the lamp to sit on. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of wing that part. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we have right here is the uh, the basics of the build plane. Remember that you can move, you can right click. If you're using a mouse, you can right click to, to shift the build plane. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out. And if you're using the trackpad, that's a two finger slide. Uh, and us also like a two finger click. I also believe that you can control, click, pull down control and then press click and it'll work. You can also move around the build plane uh, by clicking this, this um, square and dragging it around up at the top. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first part of the build or the, the lamp that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and I notice that there is this paraboloid right here or this, this half sphere. So either one of these would probably work. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it to the build plane. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, so you could actually size it like this um, or if you hold down shift, you can size it and it makes it bigger like that. So I'm gonna do that actually. Um, and then also what you could do is you can type in these boxes and that's actually my favorite way of sizing things. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and size this 100 by 100. So it changed that dimension, but it didn't change over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that right there. And then I'm gonna go and scroll back up and I'm gonna find that cylinder, all right? So in that cylinder, um, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down shift as well. And it's going to make that cylinder kind of grow, oops. I let go a little too quick there, the shift button. There we go. You also notice that up here on the cylinder, you have a couple of different attributes that you can change. If you wanna make that a little better, what this does is actually, so what Tinkercad does is it actually can't draw a perfect cylinder. What, so what it does is it actually kind of makes a shortcut and draws uh, sides 
instead. So like you'll notice that this has 13 sides. And if we drag that cylinder, it increases the number of sides, which makes it look like it's more round, which is kind of a cool, cool, interesting fact. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and raise this off of the build plane right here. There we go. And then I'm going to raise it up right here and try to get it close to, that's pretty close, but you'll notice it's not exactly in the middle. So I'll get it kind of close to what I want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to shift or drag and um, not shift. I'm just going to drag it to select both of those shapes. And then I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to align, use the align tool. So I'm going to line, line it up. And what you can do is you can actually align it up like over here or over on this side like that. But I actually want to write it, line it up exactly in the middle. And then that will make it look just like that. Uh, and then go ahead and press group. And then you've grouped it. So next, what I'm going to do is I want to actually carve out that shape right there. So there's a lot of different ways you could do that. I'm just going to go ahead and drag the sphere over. And I'm going to notice that, let's see, so this is 100 by 100. So I'm going to have to make this smaller. So what, like I said, what I want to do is carve out that shape right there. So like the inside of this, so that it's actually more like a lamp. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And then I'm going to shift and I'm going to have to make this just a little smaller, right? So, so this one was 100 by 100. I'm going to make this one, um, I'm going to go for super thin. I'm going to go for 98 by 98. Oops. I'm going to press the tab key. I missed and I pressed the caps lock there. 98 and it gets it over there. And then I'm going to go ahead and press this one right here. And I'm going to make this one 98. All right. So then it makes that that shape right there. So that's just a little bit smaller than this right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and sh select, oops, sorry. I'm going to actually click this one and I'm going to turn this one into a hole. So then when I group the shapes together, this part is going to carve out the other shape. So for instance, if I just grabbed this and moved it over here and then selected both, it would carve out a sphere size shape when I pressed group right there. So you guys will see that right there, right? So actually that's not exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna press the undo button, which is command Z. It's also right here, or control Z if you're using your Chromebook. And then I'm gonna select both of those and then I'm gonna line them up. Select that right there, select that right there. And now, so these are perfectly aligned. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select, click, click outside. And then I'm gonna select this one and I'm going to push it down so that it's below right there. And then it's carving out the inside of that when I select all and then press the group. So you'll notice it selected all and pressed that right there. So there we go. So that's the first part. And if I go ahead and take a look at my lamp. So the next part that I notice is that there's a, a little cylinder kind of coming out to, to hold the, uh, the lamp together. I'm gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do Hold the lamp to the base. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down to eight by eight and oops. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select right here and just make it a little bit taller. And then what I'm gonna do, this is this part's a little tricky. So what I'm gonna do is get really close and then I'm gonna select and drag this around so that it is perpendicular to the build plane. And what I'm doing is I'm selecting those two little arrows that were right there. Right, and then I'm clicking and dragging, and you'll notice that if you're outside of that kind of um, kind of compass that's right there, then um, it changes by degrees. If you go inside, it snaps to just the you know just different um, fractions of a 90 degree angle. So then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag that off the build plane, and then pull it right here. And then I'm going to pull this up off the build plane right there and attach it to this. I'm going to go ahead and check the alignment real quick. And then make sure that that's right in the middle. It wasn't perfect there. Now it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and select and group that. And it groups it right there. So next, I'm going to go ahead and grab. So we have, if I look at this, there's a nice little triangle. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this make it 10. Okay, and then this one, I'm going to make it 15. 
There we go. That gets it to be just about right. I'm going to go and select this. Whoops. There we go. Kind of get that close to where I want it. And move it over just a little bit more. And then select all, line it up, and then press the group key. There we go. So this is kind of a quick and dirty version. It's if you want to get more precise, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, but then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and group these together. So I'm going to go ahead and do make some uh, bars that I'm going to duplicate. So next, what I'm going to do is duplicate it. And now it's got the duplicate. Duplicate, they're kind of right over each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this down and push this down just like that. Next, a nice, another little uh, nice, uh, nice feature of Tinkercad is you can change the view. So I'm going to shift over here to look at this side so that I can focus in on this area right here. Select all, line them all up. You know what, I'm going to change this one right here. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and actually make a few more of these right here. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and make these, I think they were 10 by 10. and then pull them up. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and line them up. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead, group them. And then that's actually gonna be really nice when I line them up right here. Another thing that you can do is you can actually press the arrow keys, which is kind of a nice feature to make things, to move things and make minor little precise adjustments. Last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this to the top and group them together. And now I've got a basic lamp. So one other feature, so this, you know, like I could obviously spend a lot more time on this, but this is kind of a quick video. And if obviously like if this is your first Tinkercad project, you know, you're you're going to make things and it's going to, you know, it's going to be a project and you can turn it in and you'll, if you've used all of kind of the, the tools that, that I've shown you, you know, you're going to do just fine. Um, but know that as you use the platform and as you use kind of getting, get used to 3D design, it's going to look better and better and better. So last but not least, uh, what I want to show you is how to import other people's designs. Now, it's really important that you keep track of the different designs that you use so that you can cite them in uh, lots of different ways. So what you can do is you can go ahead and go to thingiverse.com. This is kind of my favorite. And then go ahead and search for, so what I'm going to do is search for a light bulb. Okay, and then it's going to come up with lots of different places there are lots of different people that have come up with different designs. And obviously, like if you turn in this design for your project, I'm going to know you cheated and that is unacceptable. So just remember that, that I want this to be your design, not somebody else's, but you can use other people's parts of other people's design in your design, which is totally fine. Uh, so I kind of like this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the thing files right here. I know it says download all files up here. Don't do that. It's going to give you a zip file. This is a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and download this one right here to my downloads folder. Light bulb. It's going to save it right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to my design right here. And I'm going to go to import, choose file. And this one is in my downloads folder, lightbulb.stl, uh, and open that right up. There we go. Import, 
and it's going to take just a minute. The more complicated designs you choose and on your Chromebook, if you're working on a Chromebook like that, it's going to take quite a while to import. So just be ready for that. Okay, so it imparted my light bulb. What I'm going to do is go ahead, click on that, and I'm going to shrink it. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, and then I'm going to just go ahead and shrink it. And what that does is it shrinks it proportionally. Oops. I let go of the shift key too quickly. So undo, command Z. Okay, and then there we go. So now I've got my light bulb. So I'm going to go ahead and tip it. Zoom in right there and turn it around and tip it. And then I'm going to bring it, oops, there we go. Bring it back and I'm gonna go ahead and line it up right here. There we go, press the align key and then I know it's lined up. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up into using that cone that I've been using the whole time into my design. And then there's a the light bulb. So next what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and find kind of like the best view of your uh, of your lamp. And then you're gonna go ahead and screenshot it. So I'm gonna do on my computer, on my Chromebook, or on your Chromebook, it's going to be command or control shift and then the Windows switcher key. If you're using a Mac, it's four. So um, go ahead and screenshot and then you can drag like this. Again, show what I need to see in your design. I need to see that you use the whole tool. I need to see that you use the align tool. And I need to see that you used, um, you know, something else from, from some other place uh, in your design. And then go ahead and submit that PNG to this, uh, this project. And you'll be all set. Thank you for watching.